Hi, Mike here. Since 2007, I, together with my other half, have been the co-host of MacBytes, a podcast where we take a look at all things Apple related. I recently had the need to get some information about all the episodes of the podcast. I needed the episode title, the URL of the audio file, the date it was published, the duration, that kind of stuff. And I needed to store that information in a structured format in Excel. Now, the first question is, where can I get that information from? And the second question is, how do I get it into Excel? And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. All the information that I need is stored in the podcast's feed file, which is an XML file. If you're using Excel on Windows, you can use data, get data from web to connect directly to the XML file by specifying its URL. If you're hosting your own feed file, you would know the URL. If not, you might be able to get it via your podcast host's control panel. However, on the Mac, there's no get data from web. But Power Query on the Mac has a from XML option, as long as the XML file is stored locally. So you'll need to download a copy of the XML file. Again, if you're hosting your own feed, you'd probably have a local copy. And if not, you can probably download a copy from your podcast host control panel. Before I start, even if you're not a podcaster, what this video is really about is how to import data from an Excel file into Excel and clean that data. I'm just using the podcast feed as an example. In fact, to avoid exposing any sensitive data, I'm going to use a made up file. The structure is the same as a real podcast XML file, but the data is made up. So here's the XML file in a text editor. As you can see, it's not easy to read, but then XML files aren't meant to be read by humans. They're meant to be read by computer programs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down and then open a new Excel file. In the Excel file, I'll click on data, click the arrow next to get data and select get data power query. I'll select XML as the data source and click browse. Then I need to go and find the XML file, which is on my desktop and it's there. So I'll select it and click get data and click next. What that will do is open up the Power Query editor, which I'll just maximize. Notice that the first column, which is called channel, has got a double headed arrow next to its name and clicking on that arrow will expand part of the XML file structure. It will show me some, not all of the headings from that XML file. If I then keep all of those selected and click OK, it then displays the data from those columns in the query editor. But you'll notice that some of the other columns have got double headed arrows too. Now, unless you're very familiar with the structure of the XML file, you won't know what content is hidden behind which column. So if that's the case, I suggest you expand every column that contains a double headed arrow and then remove the columns that you don't need. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through and expand every column that's got a double headed arrow. So I'm back. That took me about 30 seconds. And what I've done is I've expanded every single column so I can see all the data from the XML file. But there's only a few columns that I want to take back into Excel. There's the one called title one and there's the subtitle. There is the duration, the attribute URL and the publication date, the pub date. So if I click on the home tab, choose columns, I can then select just those columns. So it's title one and subtitle duration, attribute URL and pub date and click OK. The next thing I need to do is change the column headings. So I'll double click on title one and change that to say episode title and subtitle. I'll change that to say description. The duration, I'll just change to have a capital D. Attribute URL, 
I'll put URL of audio file, that is the URL to the MP3 file, and pub date, I'll call that one release date. That's the date that the podcast was released. But there's other things I need to do. One of the things I need to do is change the duration because at the moment it's shown in number of seconds and I want it to show as hours, minutes, seconds, the duration of the podcast. You'll notice that just to the left of the word duration, we've got ABC123. That is telling us that Power Query doesn't know what sort of data is in that column. Although it looks like numeric values, it's not. It's actually text entries. So I'm going to click the ABC123 and change that to whole number. And the data in that column now becomes actual values rather than text entries that look like numeric values. So what I need to do is with that column selected, go to add column, custom column. And I'm going to enter a formula which is written in the language called M, which is the language of the query editor. And that formula is duration dot from open brackets, double click on duration over here because that's the name of the column and then divide by 86,400, 86,400 being the number of seconds in a day and click on OK. That has created a new column. You can see that on the right, which shows days hours, minutes, seconds. And then I'm going to delete the original duration column. I don't need that. So I can right click on its heading and select remove columns and then rename the column at the end instead of custom. I'll call that one duration. If I then come out of the query editor by clicking home, close and load, that loads the data into the spreadsheet. And you can see that we've now got pretty much everything we need, apart from the duration is shown as decimals and the release date isn't actually dates, that is text. So I'll go and fix those problems by going back to data, clicking the arrow next to get data and selecting launch Power Query Editor. That reopens the query editor. So let's deal with the duration first. If I change the data type for that column from unknown, which is the ABC123, to duration, it doesn't have any effect on the data, but it now treats that as a duration column. So if I come out of the query editor, we can now see that it's showing days, hours, minutes, seconds, which is what we want. We could do with removing the days bit, but it's not critical. I'll leave that as it is. Let's go back into the query editor. And the final thing I need to do is to fix the date problem because what's in that column is text entries. It's not actually dates. And the way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to, first of all, remove everything before the comma space. To do that, select that column, click on transform extract. Extract means keep. So actually I want to keep initially everything after the comma space. It's going to be a multi-step process, this one. So keep everything after the comma space. So I want to extract or keep text after delimiter. A delimiter is a single character or a string of characters in this case, comma space. So I'll type comma space in there and click OK. And that has kept everything after that delimiter. What I now want to do is keep everything before the third space. So I click again on that column, release date, transform, extract, text before delimiter. The delimiter is a space, but I don't want to keep everything before the first space. I want to keep everything before the third space. So I need to go to advanced and tell it to skip two delimiters and click OK. 
we now have the dates. Well, they're not real dates because the data type is showing as text. That's the ABC. So if I click the ABC and change it to date. Now I have real dates. The last thing I want to do is change the sort order because back in Excel, I want this table to be sorted on a release date, newest to earliest. So I click the drop down next to release date and say sort descending. And then select home, close and load. And that has now reloaded the data into the spreadsheet. Now, what happens if another episode of the podcast is released? Well, that will update the XML file. And what I've done is I've got an updated version of the XML file. It's got the same name as the original file. So it's still called Ice Cream Podcast and it's on my desktop. So all I have to do now is click on data, refresh all. And what that will do is go back and grab the data from the XML file, but not only will it do that, it will also behind the scenes perform all of those data cleaning and data transformation actions that I've just gone through. So let me click data refresh all, and you can see that it's now updated everything in that table. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.